A chargeback is commonly understood to be a reversal of a credit card charge or a dispute, but did you know that there's different types of chargebacks? In this video, I'm gonna give you the basics of what a chargeback is, why it exists, the costs associated with it, and the reasons that they're commonly filed, and also what to do if your business receives a chargeback complaint. So a chargeback is a reversal of a credit card transaction and it comes directly from the cardholder's bank. So it's very different than a simple return of a sale between the consumer and the business. Chargebacks have existed to give buyers protection from businesses who might otherwise be selling subpar products and or services or doing things that fall a little bit out of ethical boundaries. The chargeback process favors the consumer as a result and oftentimes businesses don't even know that a chargeback dispute has occurred until after the complaint and dispute has been filed already. However, there are chargeback services that can catch chargebacks before they they ever get reported to the merchant account provider and I'll talk more about that later on and in other videos in this series. There's over a hundred different individual reason codes that exist between the four major card brands which are Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover but we're looking here today at the three general categories for chargebacks. The first of the three types is called true fraud and this is the unauthorized use of a credit card and it's without the cardholders knowledge. So basically theft has occurred. A true fraud chargeback often results in the cardholder's credit card number being shut down and a new credit card number being issued due to the fact that the credit card number itself has been compromised and there's an increased likelihood of a repeat fraudulent transaction. This is the only category of the three that we're gonna talk about today where the cardholder is actually encouraged to call their bank first instead of trying to get in touch with the merchant to resolve the matter. Number two is chargeback fraud, and this is where the cardholder has ill intent and is likely trying to get away with not paying for a product or a service that they have rightfully ordered or purchased. So the cardholder intent is the critical element here with chargeback fraud. The business may have delivered the product or the service exactly as described and mutually agreed to with the consumer, but the cardholder files a chargeback dispute so that they don't have to actually pay for the item. And oftentimes the chargeback dispute will pass the requirements to file a legitimate chargeback at the time that it was being reported, which again is why the chargeback process is slightly in favor of the consumer. The consumer gets to make the complaint and you, the business owner, have to play defense by proving your case in the chargeback dispute process. The chargeback fraud category is the most disheartening of the three, in my opinion, because the cardholder is unethically trying to take advantage of a consumer protection policy and therefore going against the very nature of what chargebacks were originally intended to do. So they're using a policy that's supposed to protect them and they're abusing it. And finally, number three, the third category is called friendly fraud. And friendly fraud occurs when cardholders issue a chargeback with no malicious intent. It could be due to common honest errors like forgetfulness, being unclear of what they purchased, not recognizing a charge, delays in shipping, or the consumer not receiving a product along with many other scenarios. And here's a quick short list of the main reasons why chargebacks could occur. Number one is that they didn't receive an item that they ordered. Number two, they didn't receive all of it, as in only part of it was delivered if it was a physical product or only part of it was completed if it was a service. Number three, they feel that a product or service was substandard or not what was represented when they purchased. A damaged item could fall into this category. Number four, they thought they were being billed the incorrect dollar amount. Number five, they didn't recognize the charge on their credit card statement. Number six, children making a purchase on a parent's credit card account without their knowledge. Number seven, they forgot that they bought it or someone else was authorized to use their credit card but didn't tell them that a purchase was being made. This could oftentimes happen when one family member makes a purchase and doesn't tell someone else like a spouse or a parent that a purchase was being made. Number eight is that they made a mistake, a flat out mistake, or were confused about what they were actually buying. And number nine, that they were under the influence or made a purchase that they didn't have any recollection of. 
since friendly fraud deals largely with reasons related to miscommunication or misinformation on either or both parties, these types of chargebacks can be prevented from happening if you take the right proactive steps at your company to mitigate the likelihood of one of these scenarios from happening. In other words, there's things you can do to stop friendly fraud chargebacks from happening in the first place. I've published other videos that'll give you specific action items and things that you can do to reduce and sometimes eliminate friendly fraud, as I just mentioned, and chargebacks in general at your business. So these videos are in the chargeback prevention category and all of the videos in this series are gonna be linked in the description. So be sure to scroll down and check those out. There's over 30 best practices and action items that you can implement. And a lot of them are best practices that have been proven to work over the years and are simple to put in place. After all, no one likes to have chargebacks and that's an obvious statement, but worth noting. So make sure that you're doing everything in your business, everything that you can to educate your staff and your employees, as well as the consumers who purchase products and services from you. You'll find varying statistics out there, but it's safe to say that the two categories of friendly fraud and chargeback fraud account for well over half of the chargeback cases that are reported with Visa, MasterCard, and all of the major card brands. And that should be good news to you because again, there is something you can do about it. Once again, click the links in the description to view the next videos in this chargeback series on how to reduce and eliminate chargebacks at your company and your business. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're doing research on chargebacks because you think your business might fall into a high risk category, category that's subject to a lot of chargebacks, or maybe you've received some chargebacks before and you're just looking at different ways to correct the problem, there's links below that will allow you to schedule a call with me to get in touch with myself or someone on my team to actually help you out with the issue. If you found value in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend or colleague and hit the subscribe button if you want to get more videos on general payment processing information and setting up payment systems, merchant accounts, and software tools that make the process process of collecting payments online and off simple and easy. Until next time, I'm Brian Manning. Have a good one.